Welcome everyone to the seminar. <laughs> My presentation is to think safety first. I've been applying manure commercially for over 30 years. I've done a lot of things. Uh, we've done it, uh, I've done it safely and I've done it unsafe. So it can be uh, what we make out of it. Uh, and I just continue down through today. I'm going to, topics today are going to be drive lines and PTOs, drag line safety and fatigue. Some of the things that we do in a hose drag situation uh, and it also applies to other aspects of handling manure. Application is getting longer and faster. Uh, we have to do more in a short amount of time. Accidents can happen to anybody and most are pre present, preventable. As my grandfather always said, accidents can happen to anybody, clumsy people have the most. So we need to pay attention to what we're doing. People make mistakes. They forget things, they do things in the wrong order. We do things we shouldn't do, we get distracted, and we get overloaded. The goal today is to have, have everyone first stop, think about what you're doing, and then react to this situation. My goal is that you don't become a statistic. We'll talk about PTOs and drive lines. There's a lot of PTOs, a lot of drive lines that happen in manure application, and knowing and keeping your mind in that place of where the shafts are instead of uh, wandering your mind somewhere else is really helpful. I'm going to identify some of the safety hazards and safe operation PTOs and drive shafts, and I'll also talk about a few incidents that have happened over the years. On our manure equipment, you can see on tanks, on agitators, on some drive pumps that are PTO driven, we have uh, power units that have shafts turning anywhere from 2 to 2400 RPM. Uh, a lot of things happen in a short amount of time, so we want to pay a particular close attention to that and make sure that proper safety is taken care of with shields as well. This actually was a good result. You can see that the man's clothes are stripped off of him, but he's okay, he's still standing. You have to remember that a three inch diameter PTO spinning at 540 RPM travels seven feet in one second. So I ask you how tall are you and how fast do you think you can react? At 1000 RPM it's 13.1 feet in a second. We have to pay particular attention to this. This is a slide that I obtained from a safety presentation many years ago. This was actually an individual that grabbed a PTO shaft that didn't have a shield on it, and as you can see, it dismembered both of his arms. Results from PTOs is fractures and lacerations, spinal cord injuries, amputation, and death. Master shields are put in place for a reason. You can see the one on my left. The shield is there. As you tip it down, you're not going to get it. reduces the possibility of got, getting caught up where the knuckles are in the shaft. The shield has been removed on the one on the right-hand side. It makes it easier to hook up, but it also creates a hazard. As you can see in this operation on a vertical pump, Everything looks fine except there was no shield on that PTO shaft. PTO sh shields might be a little expensive, but accidents are very expensive. We had an operator in Minnesota, and friends of ours, uh, they were operating a farmer's equipment. The farmer didn't have a shield on the PTO. These were experienced. They've been pumping manure as long as I have over 30 years. And as he was reaching up to do something, a piece of his clothing got caught on that unshielded PTO, and he found himself between the drawbar and the PTO. And fortunately, his phone fell out, and he was able to call someone by reaching his phone to come and have the PTO shaft shut off. When his no brother, the friend of mine, was notified, the first thing that went through his mind was, when is the funeral going to be? This is real life. This isn't something that's just made up. 
It happens and it happens to the best of us. What are you thinking about at the time when you're walking up to the PTO? What are you wearing? Do you have loose clothing? Is it sticking out? Do you have strings on your hoodie? What happens when you bend over? Where are you standing? Who or what is around? If the unit is running unattended, is it protected? Can others or animals come up and get entangled into it or particularly children around farms? Be alert. Think about what's going on. Just don't walk mundanely up and down. Concentrate. Remember to be alert and cautious around PTOs and drive lines. Keep all shields in place and keep them in good working order. So let's talk about the hose drag situation a little bit. This is one in particular that Kevin asked me to talk about. And I've been hose dragging over 30 years. The objectives here are to identify potential hazards, a few of the potential hazards for high pressure hoses, and identify safe operating procedures in the field when we're applying. This is kind of old school being PTO, but there are still a few units out. The reason I pulled up this picture is take a look at how the tractor is positioned. If you're familiar with this tractor, it's a left-hand exit only. So you are exiting the tractor right next to the lagoon. If the bank is slippery, what's going to happen? It's an example for us to think about how we set up our equipment and where it's set up and do we have to have it set up that way to be safe. This is more of the commercial applications taken. There's a lot of different variations of these and I'm not uh, picking on any particular company or anything. What I see in this slide as I'm looking at is we have the discharge of the high pressure sticking out next to the wheels. And if you look, you can see just below the gray box, that's where the controls are for controlling the speed and start up, shut down, and all of that. Being placed right next to the high pressure hose, you have the opportunity for that hose to come loose and slap up against you. You know, you think, well, it may not happen. Well, it did. We had an incident uh, when my father and I were working together. The hose connection came loose. The hose whip stripped the feet out from underneath it. His head went into the cylinder block, and he ended up with stitches in his head, knocked him out. Manure was pouring out. He could have drowned. He came to drug himself to the truck, and we were able to get things shut down and transport him to emergency care. So... Can it happen? Yes, it can happen. Make sure you know where your controls are, and if you can relocate them away from where the discharge and pressure lines are, you're much better off. In the field, we want to look at the operation. The safety of the equipment, is the tractor properly sized for the equipment that's being towed? If the tractor's too light, you might have the front end coming in there, you might lose control. Only have riders in the vehicle with you if there's a training seat available. Take adequate breaks while operating to combat fatigue and learn to know your own limits and take breaks as necessary. Like again in the beginning I said we put in a lot of hours and time because of the pressure that we need. If we get overloaded our minds are going to wander, we're going to fall asleep and that's when accidents happen. In hose application, we have to be aware of the working pressures up to or over 200 PSI. The hose can burst, the hose can fail. The risks are sudden impacts of the hose, flooding and drowning, and many others. One of the areas I wanted to touch on that I haven't before is the compressed air. A lot of the times when we're cleaning these lines out, we're putting air pressure in between, and of all of us know that when we have a line come off in a shop that hose whips around. So I got thinking about that and I wanted to do some comparisons of volume with pressure. So at 10 PSI, we increase the volume in that hose by 0.68. So you would have 1.68 compared to just one. The same at 50 PSI, 3.4 increase, and 100 PSI, 6.8. Uh, times of the increase. So putting that into a comparison, a 660 foot uh, supply hose 
holds approximately 1,000 gallons or 133 cubic feet. At 10 PSI, it changes the volume from that 1,000 gallons to 1,680 gallons. 10 PSI isn't much. If you step on the hose, you can collapse it somewhat at 10 PSI. Even at 50 PSI, we're increasing at 4.4 or up to 4,400 gallons instead of 1,000. And at 100 PSI, it gets very violent for that to escape. Long hours and fatigue. We want to make sure that we pay to particular close attention to this. Uh, I have had an incident over the years uh, where fatigue has kicked in and uh, we could have had a very serious situation. Fatigue kills and maims and it damages the equipment and property. We want to make sure that this doesn't happen. If we get our equipment damaged, it, it limits our effectiveness of completing the task on time. And of course, killing and maiming people, whether you run off the road, whether you flip over in a drainage ditch or something because you can't mentally keep your mind together, these are things that do truly happen. In my case, I was working in the middle of the night and I've shared this at seminars and I've had a lot of head nodding in the area and those of you online that have experienced this, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm working in the middle of the night. I'm on about day three or four of sleeping three to four hours a day, trying to push through the night to get it done. And as I'm out there working, all of a sudden I see objects and hallucinations that are coming up out of the ground. And they're, they're real weird figures that are happening. My mind is shutting down and I'm hallucinating. I shut down, I told the people, come and get me, I'm done. We need to know our limits. We need to be knowledgeable. We have to receive the proper training on the equipment, and we need to do it in a safe and efficient manner. So remember, locate equipment safely and securely at the pumping location. Locate the operating controls away from potential hazards. Pay particular attention to the operation in the field and make sure that you're doing it safely. Make sure you have adequate breaks. Safety is an ongoing program. Don't take things for granted. Receive regular training. Review and update equipment regularly. If you build it, keep it safe. Monitor fatigue and keep an eye on stress. Don't forget the day-to-day -day safety equipment, alertness, safety glasses, protective clothing, and gloves. Thank you for your attention today, and I hope you have a safe and healthy year.